the Huawei MediaPad T510 is a new entry-level tablet which offers quite nice features like a Full HD resolution, a fast octa-core processor and a metal back. In addition to that, it is running Android 8.0 Oreo, starting at just 199 euros and probably the equivalent in US dollars, it is relatively inexpensive. But is it a good tablet? I'm NJ for MyNextTablet.com and this is my Huawei MediaPad T510 review. By the way, the T510 is a successor to the MediaPad T310 from last year. Compared to the previous version, a lot has improved, including better internals and a better display. Alright, let's start this review. The design of the Huawei MediaPad T510 is very similar to the one of its predecessor. As with the T310, we're getting a metal back. However, there's a plastic bar at the top for the antennas and the frame is made of half metal and half plastic. Huawei is offering this tablet in two colors called black and champagne gold. While it is not the thinnest at 7.8mm, it is still thin enough at this price point. That goes for the weight of 460 grams as well. Because of the metal back, it does not feel cheap, but it's not as premium feeling as an iPad either. Well, it seems to be well built. It is charged using a micro USB port, so there's no Type-C connector. Using an adapter, you can connect accessories like external hard drives. Additionally, the MediaPad T510 features a headphone jack and a microSD card slot. On the right side, there are the volume controls and a power button. There are two speakers on the bottom. That's not an ideal position because you can cover them easily while lying on a bed or sofa and having the tablet on your belly. But actually, you can just rotate it and then it's fine. Anyways, the sound quality is certainly good enough. It's fine for watching YouTube and listening to some music. Yes, these are not the best speakers, but for better ones you usually have to invest a bit more. While the main camera on the back has a resolution of 5 megapixels, we get a 2 megapixel front facing camera only. I would not call any of those cameras good. Pictures and videos look kind of unsharp, but I guess it's good enough for video chats. Again, I would not call them great though. Compared to the MediaPad T310, Huawei has improved the screen a lot. The Huawei MediaPad T510 has a 10.1 inch display with a Full HD resolution of 1920x1200. Even though the pixel density is not as high as on premium tablets, I think Full HD on 10 inches is high enough. Yes, if you're looking very closely, you might see pixels. But if you're holding the tablet at a normal distance in front of you, text and icons do look sharp. It is an IPS panel with good viewing angles and the screen is laminated. That means there is no noticeable gap between the touchscreen and the IPS layer. It is bright enough as well, but certainly not the brightest. You can use it outside, but in direct sunlight it's a bit dark. The contrast is very good though and colors look nice. So overall I think the display of the MediaPad T510 is pretty good. The resolution is high enough and other aspects are good too. Sure, you can get better ones, but these are much pricier. By the way, it does not support an active pen. The Huawei MediaPad T510 is powered by a high silicon Kirin 659 octa-core processor, which is developed by Huawei itself. It's an octa-core chip with 8 Cortex-A53 cores, which are clocked at 1.7 to 2.36 GHz. Depending on the market, you can get it with 2GB of RAM and a 16GB internal storage or 3GB of RAM and a 32GB storage. I've got the later one because only that one is available in Germany. With the 32GB version, around 22GB are free to use by the user out of the box. The rest is taken up by the system. The performance of the Kirin 659 with the 3GB of RAM is good enough for almost everything. And that is what my benchmark tests show as well. In Geekbench 4, the MediaPad T510 gets around 960 and 3700 points. In Antutu, it gets a result of over 86,000. With these scores, it is much faster than tablets from last year that cost between 200 and 300 US dollars. 
and it is faster than the new and much pricier Samsung Galaxy Tab A 10.5. For my everyday use the performance was good enough too. Chrome, YouTube and similar apps run without any problems. That includes Microsoft Word and the split screen view. You can open and use two apps side by side without any issues. The MediaPad T510 gets good results in my gaming test as well, especially when considering the price. Sure, it is not a perfect gaming tablet. If you're looking for a higher end performance, you have to spend at least $100 more. But most games run very nicely. Among those are Asphalt 8 and Modern Combat 5. The later one did not run smoothly on the predecessor. Games like Into the Dead 2 run smoothly as well, but with that one I had to turn the graphics to medium. It stutters too much at high settings. Players Unknown Battlegrounds Mobile runs very nicely too. In fact, it is playable at lowest and even medium settings. You cannot choose the HD graphics settings though. The MediaPad T510 is shipped with Android 8.0 Oreo. And I'm afraid to say that it probably will never get an update to Android 9. Obviously I can't predict the future. However, in the past Huawei has been very disappointing with updates, especially for their cheaper tablets. Sadly, that is the case with most competitors as well. On top of Android 8, we get the Emotion UI in version 8. That is the same custom interface from Huawei that you might know already from their smartphones and previous tablets. With this Emotion UI, the interface is customized quite heavily and you can customize it even more by yourself. Um, the Emoji is one of the few things that can be a bit annoying with tablets from Huawei. However, I'm often using the phones and I get used to it and it's not too bad. If you get it, you should go through most of the settings to see what you might want to change. For example, I'm not a big fan of the SwiftKey keyboard, but it is Android, so you can always change it. One setting is missing on the T510 though. With tablets from Huawei, text and icons often look way too big out of the box, like zoomed in. However, usually there's a display setting called view mode. With that one, you can scale it down so that the content does not look as zoomed in. For some reason, that setting is missing. Hopefully it will come back with an update. Besides that, there are also a lot of pre-installed apps and they really are a lot. You can uninstall about half of them, but not all. Well, I've mentioned that everything is heavily customized. And again, usually I can live with it, but it's not ideal. Personally, I prefer vanilla Android or the UI from Samsung. But well, at least we get a lot of features. Inside the Huawei MediaPad T510 sits a battery with a capacity of 5100 milliamp hours. In my standard battery test, that is enough for a runtime of 10.5 hours. As usual, I'm looping an HD video at 50% brightness and activated Wi-Fi. As you can see in my battery comparison, the result of 10.5 hours is not really good, but not really bad either. It's kind of what you expect at this price point. It should last you a whole day doing normal use. Actually, if you don't use it constantly, it will probably last you two days. However, if you're playing games, it will drain the battery faster. In standby, it almost does not lose any energy at all. Alright, so how good is the Huawei MediaPad T510? Compared to the T310, it is much, much better. The performance is much better, we get a much nicer Full HD display and Android 8. However, it is not outstanding in any way. Instead, it's a nice lower middle class tablet. And that is exactly how it is priced. I've had a lot of good things to say about it and some negative points too. The battery life could be better and I wish Huawei would update their tablets regularly. But overall, I think the MediaPad T510 is a good value for its price. At the same time, it is priced competitively and right now, you can't get a better tablet for the same price. However, obviously it depends what you're looking for exactly and there are some interesting alternatives. One of the first ones is the Huawei MediaPad M5 Lite 10. It actually features the same display and the same internal hardware. While it costs around 70 euros more, it offers a full metal body and premium features like a fingerprint scanner, four speakers and an active pens option. Another alternative is the MediaPad M3 Lite 10 from last year. Right now it costs about the same, 
The performance is not as good and it is still running Nougat. However, it does offer those premium features like a fingerprint sensor and four speakers that the T510 does not have. If you want to spend a bit less, you should also check out the Amazon Fire HD10. It is not as fast and it looks and feels cheaper. But it does have a full HD display too and it is a lot cheaper with a great overall value. Alright, that's my review of the Huawei MediaPad T510. If you have any questions, feel free to write me in the comments. And by the way, you can always find my current recommendations under the The Best section on mynexttablet.com. And I am Andrzej for mynexttablet.com. Thanks for watching.